Hi, I'm Hawken with Top Don, and today we are going to go through the new Phoenix Max. The Phoenix Max is Top Don's top professional quality tool. It comes with a four channel lab scope, which we are actually not going to walk through today, but it has a number of other features that make it a top diagnostic tool. We're going to walk through some of those features today, and we're going to show you how to use all of the different menus and functions on the tool itself. So when you get your tool, you will notice that it is an open Android platform. So when you're on the main screen, when you boot up the tool, you'll see right here that we swipe from the bottom of the screen and we have a number of apps. You can also install additional apps on the tool if you wish, since again, it is an open Android platform, which is really nice. Uh, it allows you to make greater use of the tool than just for a diagnostic tool with the Top Don software. So you'll see on this one here, for instance, I've installed the Curian app, so I can actually use my Top Don for uh, DVOM functions as well as scope. So pretty cool, uh, really a great thing that uh, they did with the tool, making it an open Android like this. So we're going to go into the diagnostic software, which is the Max icon, and we're going to actually kind of work ourselves in reverse. So first thing we're going to do is go to the gear in the top right corner. Now the gear is very similar to all the other Top Don tools that you have probably seen in the past. Uh, the gear gets you to all of the settings for the diagnostic suite. So uh, first on the top left here, we have the MDCI Pro settings menu. Uh, this is where you can select which dongle you're going to use. Now on the Phoenix Pro, the dongle is in fact a J2534 compatible device. So you can use it for programming with factory software, or you can use it with your Phoenix Max for uh, just regular diagnostics and uh, cloud-based programming that is supported through the tool. So uh, great asset there. MDCI Pro Management, actually it's where you can manage the settings, whether or not you want to connect with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So that's kind of a unique feature that's uh, kind of nice. Um, typically I'm just going to use Bluetooth, I'm not going to use the Wi-Fi, but it is nice to have that option if you do want to turn it on. Activate MDCI Pro is where you can type in the serial number and activation code for a new MDCI. Uh, if you get the tool brand new, uh, you will have to activate that MDCI, and this is where you will perform the activation. There's also a TPMS add-on uh, that I believe is coming in the future, and you can activate that to the tool. Fix MDCI Pro firmware and system. This is something that support may ask you to use periodically if you are having any glitches with your tool. So keep that in mind as uh, not something you're going to use on a regular basis, but perhaps if you do run into an issue with the tool, uh, support may ask you to do this. Programming. The programming menu takes you to the cloud based programming that is supported directly through the tool. So this tool has support for a number of different brands, uh, primarily Asian and European brands. And basically these are files that are stored on Top Don servers for a variety of control modules on various makes and model vehicles. Now, this online programming is not an all encompassing database. So it is possible that you may find a vehicle where the programming is not covered on your specific module or vehicle model. Uh, we do our very best to get as much coverage as possible. And uh, again, this is where you will find that option on your tool. Uh, remember that BMW and Mini Cooper are accessed through the same menu and Land Rover and Jaguar are accessed through the same menu. Uh, Volkswagen and Audi do have their own separate menus. Uh, and of course, you can see that we also have Nissan, which uh, I would also imagine Infinity would work through that menu. Uh, Porsche has its own menu. Subaru has its own menu. And of course, uh, Mercedes-Benz has its own menu. So that's the online programming menu. Now we're going to go to data stream sample. This is where you can find any data stream samples that you have saved uh, when performing diagnostics on your tool. So just a, a quick menu you can go to to view any of those sample recordings. My order is something you are not going to use currently. Uh, it's a function that is not enabled on the tool at this moment, so no need to worry about that currently. 
Profile is where you can actually modify your profile for the tool. So your email address, gender, and also your nickname. Change password is if you want to change the password you use to log into your tool account, um, which is what uh, stores all of the information for your uh, user profile. So that's where you can change your password. Wi-Fi is where you can change your Wi-Fi settings. So if you do want to modify the Wi-Fi settings, this is where you can find that information. We'll scroll down here. Diagnostic software clear. Uh, if you want to get rid of some software, uh, say for instance, a brand that maybe does not exist in your region and you don't particularly find useful, like for instance, we'll say uh, BAIC, it's not a brand that's found in North America that I'm aware of. So we're under remove software. We can hide it or remove it, and we're going to just delete it. And now, if we also want to hide that, we should be able to go back here, and it looks like it's actually gone. So you can hide it or delete it. And that's useful to shorten up your menus uh, if you are trying to get to the information you want faster as far as vehicle choices. Deleting out some of the unnecessary vehicle uh, manufacturers is certainly a helpful thing. So, uh, diagnostic record. We can see in here, this gives us a shortcut list to all the vehicles that we've connected to. Uh, you can quick access and reconnect to the vehicle through this menu. So that's actually very helpful. So again, that's diagnostic record. Business information lets you change any information about your business that you've entered into the tool. So address, logo, things of that nature. Uh, customer management. This will allow you to enter in customer data. Uh, if you're a mobile person, for instance, and you do mobile diagnostics programming or ADOS, you might want to enter in the names of the shops that you serve here, and then you can assign all of the reports that you generate with the tool to individual customers. Now, if you are a normal, regular repair shop, uh, it might not be time efficient for you to enter in all of this data, so most people are generally not going to do that. Now, you certainly can if you wish, but it is not necessary or required. Photo album lets you look at all of the screenshots or pictures that you've taken with the physical front camera on the tool. Uh, you can go back and review those pictures by tapping on them. So we've got some screenshots of stuff we looked at with the scope here that we can see and review. So that's nice. Um, so we're going to go down here. We also have screen recorder, the next one down. So if you want to record videos of the screen, what's happening physically on the screen, you can do that as well. Uh, and then review those after the fact in this menu. Settings is what takes you into the primary settings uh, that are more detail-oriented for the tool. So we've got, uh, this is where you can check for system updates here on the About tab in the top left. Floating window, you can turn on and off. The floating window is actually for screen record, as you can see there. So when we turn it on, we've got the screen record button here in the top right. When we turn it off, it disappears. Units, you can change from metric to imperial. Time setting, we have 12 and 24 hour formats. Language, you can change the language of your tool. Time zone, you can modify your time zone. T code is basically for software upgrading. So whether that means you are activating ADOS on your tool or you are renewing your subscription to regular tool software updates, that is where the T-code box is used for. Clear cache is something you'll do if your tool happens to slow down for any unknown reason. Uh, clearing the cache can help you with that. Restore factory settings is typically something you will never use unless you're going to sell the tool or unless the support professional tells you to use it. Logout basically prevents uh, other people from using your tool without your username and password. So that takes us through the settings menu. The next thing we're going to go through is actually, again, we're going to go in reverse order here. So uh, we're going to look at the battery tester. We're not going to actually go into that menu, but the tester allows you to test batteries using the Topdon BT Mobile Pro S. You can actually connect that to your diagnostic tool, the Max, and you can run reports on batteries, uh, charging systems, and starting systems and store those to the tool and share their, those from the tool. So uh, really a nice feature there to have access to the battery tester as part of the Max. The next thing is feedback. 
Feedback is something you will use if you run across any functions that do not work correctly or if there is a function that is missing from the tool. This is extremely vital as it helps Topdon improve the quality of their product for you every single day you're using the tool. So if we click on feedback, we'll look at how that works. Get a little message here about what diagnostic sessions have been saved. Now, the tool only logs and holds on to 20 logs uh, over time, and it's continuously erasing and replacing those. So if you get an error with your tool or you have a problem, it is important that you report that in a timely fashion. So for instance, if you had an issue on one of the vehicles you've worked on recently, let's just say it was Jaguar, we could go in and we could choose a log file and the tool does label them. So we can see here, we have a log file specifically labeled for the Jaguar we worked on. It has the date in here. So it was 2022, uh, 617. So that was June 17th. And so we know which car that was and when it was. It also stores the VIN. So we can easily uh, recall and verify that's the car we're thinking it was. Then after we choose the file, you want to tell uh, the support folks, uh, the engineers, what your problem is, what it was on the tool that did not work. If you took any screenshots, you can add those here too. Now, in this case, we didn't have an error, so we're not going to actually send this through. But you can add images, and you can also add any data stream files if there was anything that did not make sense or, again, did not work correctly. After you define what kind of problem you had, you will be able to type in some notes and also add in your email address for uh, communication purposes. So it's very important that you enter in as much detail as possible so that you can uh, articulate what the problem with the tool was. Uh, they do make efforts to fix all problems that they can, and uh, it's very helpful when you provide this feedback. So after you've attached the pictures in the log file, you can submit the result, and that goes off to the engineers so that they can fix uh, anything that's going on with the tool that's not working as designed or a feature that is not working at all. So now we're going to look at history. History basically contains a list of vehicles that you have connected to and uh, the different files that you may have saved. So if we tap on, say, this Ford Explorer, we can see that we took a diagnostic report. We've got some screenshots of some live data. Uh, we've got a pre-scan, and we've got a full diagnostic report. So this is where you can kind of see the master list of data that you gathered on a given vehicle, which is really nice. Uh, you can also just look at your diagnostic reports here, and they are all organized by date, so whatever day you use them. So that's the History tab. Now we're going to go to the Library tab. Library just basically con uh, contains some shortcuts to various features uh, or websites. So we have a shortcut to Facebook, YouTube, and then we can also see that there are access to learning materials, which is basically just some basic tool walkthrough type of stuff. Um, keep your eye on this. This may increase in uh, what is contained in here in the future. Currently, there's not much in there. Uh, coverage list, that is where you can look up uh, functions of the tool on a given year, make, model uh, vehicle. So that is helpful if you do want to verify if your tool is likely to be able to perform a function prior to hooking up or taking the vehicle into the bay. Uh, OBD fault code library allows you to selectively look up just OBD generic format codes uh, if you wish to do so. So that is the library tab. Now, the support tab. This is what allows you to have your tool remote controlled by somebody else using TeamViewer. You are also able to remote control other people's tools if you have TeamViewer installed on your computer. So this is very helpful if you have a multi-store location uh, business unit. So if you have, you know, 10 stores and you have a very experienced diagnostic tech at one store and maybe a little bit less experienced diagnostic tech at another store, he can log into the other tool and remotely control it, uh, view the data, watch the data stream, things of that nature, which would allow them to help the other technician who might be less experienced diagnose the concern on the vehicle. So this is extremely helpful uh, in a lot of situations. And again, it just uses TeamViewer, which is a very standardized software. 
So we're going to go back here. Upgrade. Upgrade is fairly self-explanatory. Basically, the upgrade menu allows you to update your software. Now, uh, you can see here there is one update waiting on a vehicle that we do not use. So we're just going to uncheck that because we're not going to do it. But you want to check your tool regularly for updates. And as long as you have a current subscription to the software, you will be able to view updates and update the tool. Uh, it is very important to keep it up to date as they are always improving and repairing functions that may not be working normally at a given time. And with all software, we know that sometimes when 90% of things are working perfectly, 10% might not be. So the goal is to fix any time when there is a 10% that is not working, uh, upgrade that and make that work just like everything else does. So again, updates are very important with your tool. Now we're going to go to the modules menu. The modules menu basically allows you to access the uh, bolt-on options, if you will, or uh, upgraded features. Uh, TPMS obviously is self-explanatory. That's for TPMS work. And oscilloscope is what allows you to access the application for the uh, four-channel oscilloscope. Now, when you plug in the four-channel oscilloscope, it will actually automatically boot up the application for that. Uh, if for any reason it did not, you could go into this menu and activate it. However, for the oscilloscope, you can also go down here and press on the home button, swipe the screen from the bottom up, and you will also see that the scope application is found right here. So you can boot it up directly from Android here, or you can boot it up through the Phoenix Max application itself under the modules menu. ADOS. ADOS is used for ADOS calibrations. This does require an additional upgrade to the tool. Please contact your local distributor or your preferred online distributor, and they can get you set up with the ADOS upgrade to your tool. Now, activating ADOS on the tool will allow you to perform di dynamic calibrations with the tool uh, and the tool alone. If you have to perform static calibrations, you would need to purchase the Phoenix Mobile ADOS frame as well as the related targets in order to complete any necessary calibrations. Service. Service allows you to access quick relearn functions on the vehicle. So uh, whether it's relearning the windows after the battery has be, uh, been disconnected, uh, maybe you have to uh, relearn the transmission adaptive values, or you've got uh, you know, something like automatic headlight, uh, something like that, uh, oil service reset, basically any kind of basic resets that often occur on a vehicle. This is the menu that you're going to access those from default. Uh, however, many of these resets are also found when you go into the specific module from the diagnostic side of the tool. And we will demonstrate that on this vehicle we are currently connected to here uh, coming up. So now we're going to take you through the three options on the far left here. So we have the quick check button. We're going to click that first. And we can see that the quick check is basically just going to go in and check all modules for codes quickly. It's a very basic scan. It's, uh, you know, essentially the fastest route to going right into checking for codes. However, it is not going to display the topology, which most people prefer displayed in front of them. So uh, really, it is important to have access to that. Um, I don't personally use the quick check, but, you know, you might find it useful. It might be something that you would uh, like to use yourself. So you can see it's just going to go through and perform a quick scan on everything. Now, we're not going to let it finish just because this is not something that we're going to use. In most cases, uh, the majority of folks are not going to use that function. The two that you're going to use the majority of the time are scan and auto scan. We're going to do auto scan first. Auto scan is going to automatically pull the VIN number from the vehicle when possible. Uh, the cases when it is not possible is typically when you get back to very old vehicles. 
So early 2000s, things of that nature, sometimes it will not pull the VIN number from the vehicle. And that's just due to the communication uh, protocols that are used on those vehicles and things of that nature. Sometimes the tool is not able to do that. So we'll cover how to address that if you do run across that. But otherwise, the auto scan function is what you will use most of the time. Now, auto scan, after we perform the auto scan and the tool pulls the VIN number, we have several options. We have quick access, which just allows us to go right in and select a module and go right into the module if we want to. Otherwise, we're going to use scan most of the time. And scan is going to take us into the menu that most of you have seen on the top down tools, which is the bus topology. So we'll give it a moment here. Okay, so now we're on the bus topology screen. So we're going to cover a couple of things before we scan the vehicle here. We're going to note on the top here, we have the top banner, and the top banner is actually something you can drag. We can actually see there are a number of additional options we have access to. So we have access to the ADOS menu up here. We have access to module programming in given situations. Uh, we have access to common functions. So those are actually going to be similar to the services menu. Uh, special functions, which are going to be dependent on year, make, and model of vehicle. But this is also a shortcut to various special functions we can perform with the tool. System list allows us to view the more basic format or layout of the modules. So instead of looking at them like topology, we can look at them in a systems list. Now, there's multiple different methods that you can use to scan the vehicle, and we'll go through each of those one at a time. We can also see in the top right, we have a voltage display. Uh, it's pretty clear that this particular vehicle does need a battery maintainer hooked up. Uh, recommend something like the Top Don Tornado T30,000 or the Tornado 90,000. These tools will actually hold the voltage steady while you are performing diagnostics or testing. Uh, very helpful. You can also use them during ADOS calibrations. Uh, you can use them during alignments. Anything where the key on engine off status is required, and uh, you're going to be doing that for any extended period of time. Uh, if you are doing programming, you do definitely want to stick with the T90000, as that is the only tool that is going to currently output enough amperage for most vehicles in a programming situation. So now we're going to cover the smart scan, which is what you're going to primarily use on the majority of vehicles. The smart scan is going to physically talk to all modules on the vehicle that are currently communicating. So it's important to remember, if any module is currently not communicating when it should be, it will turn gray. So just because a module turns gray doesn't mean that it's not equipped, even though it says that up here. Not, uh, the gray may actually indicate that that module is currently not communicating. Now, how do you know if it's not communicating? Generally speaking, with most vehicles, you should have some red modules that show codes. And when you go into those modules, in most cases, those modules are going to have fault codes that indicate there is a lack of communication with a specific other module in the vehicle. Now, the bus topology shows us what modules are supposed to be on each network. Keep in mind, you always want to default to the manufacturer's wiring diagram to be sure which module is on which network. This is a helpful display, but we still want to remember that there is the possibility that this might not be accurate on a given vehicle. So we always want to default to the factory wiring diagram if we are in fact performing bus diagnostics. So we're going to go through and let it complete its scan here, and you can see we're almost done scanning all the modules. Now this is a 2020 F-150, so it does have a pretty good number of modules. So you can tap and look at any specific any specific module, whether it has fault codes or not. And you can see the fault codes displayed like this. You can also hit the report button. And the report button, you can label whether or not you want a pre-scan, a post-scan, or a diagnostic scan. So pre-scan would be recommended prior to service on any vehicle, uh, regardless of what service you're doing to the vehicle. And diagnostic scan might be something you do after you clear fault codes and maybe drive the vehicle around to see if the faults will come back. 
And post scan would be something you would do after completing a repair and verifying things are working correctly. You might also use pre and post scans for ADOS calibrations. However, the ADOS menu actually allows you to do a specific type of report for ADOS. So now that we've scanned the vehicle, we're going to go ahead and look at what the report looks like. And we'll skip through all of this. This is just, you can set up your report to display uh, repair order number, shop information, things of that nature. So here we can see when we go all the way to the bottom, here's our report. And we do have an error actually on the ADOS section, which we can see. So heater for the windshield mounted sensor appears to be not working. If we open up our report, you can see we've actually got several fault codes. Telematics has got a couple of errors there. And if we scroll down, we'll be able to see all of this. And now on the top down professional series tools, we also have a QR code. So you can actually hit that QR code with your phone camera and pull up the link to the report directly on your phone or a tablet. Uh, if you do this, you then also have access to the URL for that specific report, and you can share that by text, email, anything you want. You can send that link directly to yourself or to a customer, which allows you to get that information into your shop management system easily, and also you can transmit it to anyone you want as long as you have that URL link. And you can always go back into the report and pull this QR code again, so it is extremely useful for that very reason. So when we went back, we cleared all of the results of the scan. So now that we've gone into the module menu here, we're going to go into the module itself. We're going to go into the PCM. So we'll give it a moment to load here. So once we're into the module menu, we can see we have a variety of options. We've got module information, which allows you to look at details of the module itself, typically part numbers, uh, software coding numbers, things of that nature. So things you might need if you are potentially going to be replacing a module. Uh, read fault code is pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna be able to look at pending codes on a module. Uh, with Ford, of course, you're gonna have access to key on engine off, self-test, and key on engine running, self-test as well. Clear fault memory, uh, self-explanatory there. It's just gonna allow you to clear fault codes. Read data stream allows you to selectively choose uh, which data PIDs you would like to look at. So we'll do that real quick here, just so you can see. One of the greatest strengths of many of Top Don's professional series tools is their ability to graph data PIDs. The graphing speed of many of the Top Don tools is far superior to some of the competition's tools. So you'll find that if you have, uh, for instance, We'll just see here, we'll do something simple. Uh, we'll do absolute load and we'll just say accelerator pedal position. So if we wanna look at those, you can see it'll give us numbers and percentages. We can also graph them, graph them independently, or we can combine them into one chart. The chart will allow you to choose up to four data streams simultaneously. And of course, after you have chosen those, you will be able to graph them on the screen. Now you can also pinch away like this to stretch out the time base, which does allow you to get in a little bit more zoom. So just a, a little tip there that will help you out. You can also tap here on this little menu to unselect or reselect some of those PIDs if you wish. And then as you'll notice on all on the uh, top down Phoenix Max, instead of swiping from the side of the screen to go back, there is actually a physical back button at the bottom of the screen at all times. Now, when we go back to the data PIDs, you can also save samples. Uh, you can hit the value button and go back and look at the values themselves. Uh, you can also save them in a report. So if you wanna save, you got a freeze frame of something that's malfunctioning and you wanna pause that and save it as a report, you can do that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go back here because we're not gonna do that. So those are the options you have with regards to data stream. Now, it's important to remember, you can also screen record. So you don't have access to the screen record button up here like you do on some of the other tools. You can see we've got some other options up here, more like a standard Android menu. Now you do have a flashlight, which is a little bit different. 
and you do have a battery saver you can turn on or off as well. However, if you want to do screen record, you do actually have to go back into the settings menu and turn on that floating window, which allowed you to see the screen record option. However, screenshots you can actually do from this bottom left here. You'll see this little picture of kind of looks like a sun with some mountains. If you tap that, it will take a screenshot. So you can always take screenshots in any screen without having to go to any other menus. So that is very helpful, especially if you catch something in action and you want to save that as a screenshot. Uh, actuation test, we're going to go to that. This is where you can selectively turn on or off various components. So bi-directional control is what many people would call this. Extremely useful uh, when you are doing diagnosis of specific components. So it's going to vary uh, what options are available on a vehicle dependent on the year, the make, and the model. But bi-directional control is actually available on a ton of different things on many vehicles. Special functions. So this is where you're going to find access to special functions that are a function of the specific vehicle. Again, this will vary by uh, year, make, or model. Uh, generally speaking, with most vehicles, the newer the vehicle, the more the options you will likely have. Uh, being that this is a 2020 F-150, we can see we actually have quite a few different things we can do here. So you can reset service. Manually reset service will walk you through the service reset procedure. Uh, clearing the adaptive transmission tables. You can clear out the adaptives if you have a new transmission installed. Uh, misfire monitor neutral profile correction would be something you do after you correct a misfire condition. Uh, relative compression, that's a great test because you can actually see the relative compression of the engine. Uh, that's great. That's something very, uh, very helpful that Ford implemented on their tools. And of course, we have also added that to our tools. So. Uh, you can see there's tons of options here, but keep in mind the special functions menu has lots of things that you'll need. Some of those may be replicated or the same as what you saw in the services menu that we talked about previously. Lastly, OBD function. This is something that you will find on some vehicles. And you can see here it just takes us into an OBD menu. Basically tells us what the readiness status is of various uh, things that are checked by the uh, ECM or PCM. So we're going to go ahead and exit out now. So that completes our overview of the auto scan menu. Now we're going to go back to the main screen. So now we're back on the main screen. And on the main screen, you also have access to scan. Scan lets you selectively choose a vehicle. So if you have an older vehicle that does not automatically identify via VIN number, or perhaps you would like to enter in the information manually yourself, this is the menu where you can do exactly that. You also have access to the OBD2 style diagnostic suite. And the OBD2 style is going to display generic OBD2 information. This is helpful for drivability diagnostics as you will find that data is generally formatted in a standardized format as opposed to manufacturer-specific format. The most useful you will find the OBD style will be when you are doing diagnosis on fuel trim-related concerns. OBD2 will allow you to see the fuel trims displayed in a universalized format instead of manufacturer-specific. So first we can see that it gives us our basic readiness, which we saw back in the auto scan, and uh, we can access it that way. Then you see all of your traditional OBD2 menus. So reading the readiness status, live data, fault codes, freeze frame, clearing fault codes, uh, seeing the onboard monitoring tests, and potentially controlling components, as well as reading additional vehicle information. So. This is what you'll find on most tools for OBD2 style mode. The benefit here is, in my particular uh, opinion, is being able to look at live data in a universal format. So what I like to do is specifically fuel trims in this particular situation. So we got long term and short term, short term, excuse me. And when you pull those up, those are going to be represented in percentages 
on every vehicle, regardless of brand. So the vehicle's not running right now, so these numbers are meaningless, but we can see that we can view these in a universal format. So again, very, very helpful information uh, when you are doing a drivability diagnosis. Uh, you'll be able to view other things like mass airflow, uh, things like barometric pressure, also the map or manifold absolute pressure. Uh, all of those are very helpful, and again, they're going to be in a more universalized format as opposed to manufacturer-specific. So keep in mind OBD2 mode. That is a tremendous tool for you when you are doing a drivability diagnosis. So uh, again, just another feature of the tool that can make your job easier when you are diagnosing a vehicle. So we're back on the main screen here, and we've pretty much covered everything on the tool. Uh, there are a couple other buttons on the very bottom of the screen here. So you will see there's the back button here on the bottom right. We've got the home button, which just takes us back out to the Android main screen. We've got this little double window button. So if you had the lab scope open and the diagnostic suite open, you could swipe the screen like this and go back and toggle back and forth between them. So that's pretty useful. MDCI, that's something that I don't typically use. I've never really used the button. Uh, it doesn't really do anything if you tap on it in most situations. Obviously, this other one here with the little mountain and the sun is the screenshot button. And then the little planet is actually what takes you directly to Chrome. So, that completes our walkthrough of the tool. If you run across questions or concerns with your tool, or you have anything you'd like to ask us about, or you'd just like some further information, please don't hesitate to visit our website topdon.us, or send us a message through the support portal, which is also found on topdon.us. You will also find our hotline for support listed on our website, topdon.us. I appreciate you watching the video today, and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. Thank you.